Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Scrap Mechanic, and today we're going to be making a floating fortress, and we're going to put it up against a bunch of explosive tape bots and probably just get completely annihilated and sink and uh, enjoy a watery grave. So you can see I have some remnants of me just doing some pre-episode testing. I'm trying to figure out what is the best material to build a floating fortress out of. And I've come to the determination that if I want a material that's not going to be overpowered on my side, but it's also not going to be overpowered on the enemy's side, I think tier two metal is the optimal material for defense, I mean. And that is because if you look at, I'm going to let this guy go. He's going to shoot at me, but uh, oh, there he goes. He's going to shoot at me and now watch. Actually, oh, we've already, th this is interesting. These guys, for some reason, they actually go, they go after you. If you hide behind a wall, they literally chase you down and go after you, which is interesting because they have explosives. They can blow up the wall. They don't need, and if they get too close to you and try to blow you up, they end up blowing themselves up anyways. So if any bot has an incentive to stay away if someone is behind a wall, it's the explosive tape bot. But anyway, you can see these guys, if they stop falling over, this is how much damage they do to this wall. So you can see it's really, uh, it's not a whole lot of damage. It is actually a lot of damage, but if I go one tier up as far as uh, durability goes, check this out, it does nothing. So this is obviously overpowered, but this I think is manageable. Here, I'll just, I'll cut a hole so he can still see me, I think. Oh, is he dead? Did he kill him? He killed himself. I think that right there is an acceptable level of damage. You can survive that much damage. However, <laughs> You can see I have a wood wall here, which is one durability lower. And I was really hoping the tier three wood would have been an acceptable material. But as you can see, tier three wood is six durability, but only two weight. Tier two metal is seven durability, but five weight. But that one durability makes it so that their explosive does this amount of damage. And that's just gonna be like a one shot kill on whatever I'm gonna build. So I don't think that's acceptable. So I think the only option is to use a seven durability material because it's a small area of damage that they do. But unfortunately, my only option for seven durability is either metal block two, which has a weight of five, which is much heavier than wood. Remember, we're gonna be making a floating fortress. So weight is gonna be a huge factor on how big we're gonna be able to make this thing. And the only other block I've seen that has seven durability is spaceship block, which is literally tier two metal block, but red and with some fancy lines in it. Like, look, all of the other stats are exactly the same. Here, let me put them down on the hot bar here. So we have this. We have that. They're literally the same exact stats. They're just different aesthetics. And that means that uh, we're going to have a lot of weight to try to hold up on the water. But hopefully enough bubble block will allow me to be able to do that. Here's what I'm calling it right now. What's going to happen is I'm going to get into my turret and then they're going to blow up the turret. And then they're going to continue to blow up the rest of the fortress until I sink and drown. Okay, so let's start with the fun part, which is trying to make a big hunk of metal float. So I'm gonna start with some bubble blocks and this is gonna essentially determine how big my fortress is gonna be. I'm gonna make it longer than it is wide. And we're just gonna give this a couple of, we're gonna give this a lot of layers actually. So let's just save, why is that called turret? Why is this called turret? I did not type that. What? All right, there we go, unnamed, that's what I wanted. So we're just gonna weld bubble block layer on top of bubble block layer. And then we're gonna double this layer on top of this layer. Now we got four layer, and I think, is that gonna be good enough? You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna build this on the water because as I build it, we're gonna actually see, oh, this is actually interesting. Oh no, I need, how do I get it out into the water? Cause if I hit it with my hammer, I destroy it. Oh, that's awkward. That's a little awkward, isn't it? You know what it needs? It needs a little bit of weight on the bottom to keep it upright. There, we're just gonna do that. That's not, that is really not working as well as I thought it was going to. All right, let's just delete that then. Is this thing just gonna tip over because it's gonna be top heavy? All the weight's gonna be on the top. All right, here, I want to move this. Can I do this? Oh, no, 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 no. What does it do? Oh my God. We're already off to a great start, guys. We're off to a really great start. Okay, you know what, fine. I'm just gonna put you on the bottom of the ocean. Let's see how fast this thing floats up to the top. Ready, go. Oh, <gasps> that's kind of fun. Okay, here we go. I got a bunch of weight nice and centered on this thing, which is obviously just making it sink. But we're still, why are we uneven? This should be level. The fact that this thing just floats uneven like that, I don't like it. 
There you go. Oh boy. And then I'm gonna put a layer right here. Oh no! <laughs> come back! <laughs> it's so much of an effect. All right, will you please come back? There we go. It's coming back. Oh boy, this is a real balancing act here, isn't it? Okay, no, 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 not too much, not too much, not too much. All right, here, I want that to go right there, and then this deletes right there. All right, well, now it's just, it's equal, so it just pauses like, the, ugh. I don't know what to do. You know what? Never mind. Never mind about the concrete. I really feel like this makes no sense for buoyancy. I, I'm not a physicist or anything. Definitely not a physicist. But something about this right here, my intuition is just, it just, it just senses something is wrong. But you know what I think is ultimately happening is it's reading this entire object as having like one buoyancy value. So as long as it's touching the water, it just kind of accepts that, hey, you are equally buoyant right where you are. You don't have to move. <gasps> that gives me an interesting idea. What if I was to create a division in this where there was buoyancy on two different sides? Then would it equalize out? All right, here we go. I'm really curious what this is gonna be like, because now there's different boy. Oh, that looked weird. There's different buoyancy values on either side, so I'm hoping it's gonna recognize that and then like I don't know, do something about it. You know? Oh, this is interesting, isn't it? Did this actually work? It corrects itself now. This actually worked. Here, I gotta do it with concrete again, because this is what I did in the last test. Oh. <gasps> No way! This totally worked! Okay, here, 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 here. I'll just put a whole bunch of concrete on this side. It's gonna uneven itself. So now what happened was when I deleted it, it just stayed in place. But now you can see it returns to level. I can't believe I was actually right about something like that. Off to a good start! Now I feel much more comfortable building on this thing. It doesn't behave weird anymore. All right, here we go. I'm building my first wall here. I don't know how like big I want this. I'm gonna build it, you know, I should build it out of different materials. I'm gonna have metal on the outsides just because, you know, that's the, uh, the more secure material. But do you think I can line this whole thing without sinking? All right, there we go. This is even so far. That is really disorienting me that I cannot see the bubble blocks underneath the water like that. It makes it, but you can't see the plastic. It makes it look like there's something wrong with this thing. Okay, so what I'm thinking here is I'm gonna have some holes for turrets, and turrets are gonna stick out of these holes. I'm gonna try to make these turrets really, really compact, but and also aimable, which is gonna be interesting to try to do. Ooh, how durable are pipe pieces? Because if the turret gets hit with these pipe pieces, it's just gonna be a goner, probably. Where are the pipe pieces? Ooh, these are only five durability, and these ones are four durability, but I kind of need these ones. All right, the turrets are gonna be a goner, but I think that'll be part of the challenge. Let's just deal with it. All right, so the good thing about level five driver's seats now is this whole uh, bearing lock idea and customizable bearings. So I'm gonna customize this so I can turn maximum distance, low speed, turn bearing lock on. So now that means, uh, oh, that's actually really fast. That's a lot faster than I thought it was going to be. Here, let's go into strict follow camera though. So now you can see I can actually turn this thing. Oh, that is so... I, we need lower sensitivity for these because that's the lowest sensitivity right now. I'm really surprised. But and then in addition to that, then you just hook up an electric engine for the pitch, turn that on the lowest setting as well. And now if I press W and S, I can aim up and down and left and right. However, the left and right needs to be uh, dampened for sure when it comes to sensitivity to match the electric engines. All right, now all I gotta do is slap a spud gun onto this thing and maybe a button, so where should I put the button? I guess I could put the button, I don't know, I can't put the button anywhere after how I built this. All right, I could put the button underneath the gun. Button right there, hook that into the seat. And now we got ourselves a fully controllable, oh, it'll help if I hook up the button into the spud gun, huh? There we go. Fully controllable spud gun. All right, so then if you have strict follow camera on, you can aim the, you see the cursor? You can aim the cursor to where the spud actually hits. And now wherever your cursor is pointing should be essentially where you hit. All right, so now adding these things is as simple as doing this. There we go, two more turrets added. Oh no, I just realized I cannot have another one on the opposite side. This extends past the midpoint, doesn't it? Well, there's one easy solution to that. Cut the whole thing in half and add a couple more layers to it. 
All right, so I've added four more layers. Gonna weld the other side back. All right, look at that. And then these don't collide with each other. Perfect. Excellent. Now we have four turrets, all controllable from down here. Now let's actually put them in the windows because they don't act they're not actually windowed in just yet. How how tall do we want these windows to be? I think that's good enough. Or should we should we do that? No, because then you can't see. You literally can't see what you're aiming at. We need to be able to see what we're aiming at. There we go. Now we can see where the gun's pointing, right? I think that's more acceptable. Yeah, this is good. Ooh, I'm liking this. This is gonna be good. Okay, will this thing float now? Let's find out. Oh, that's got some floating power. That actually does have some decent floating power. All right, that's exciting. Guys, these tape bots are gonna totally annihilate this thing. Do you have any idea how long it's gonna take to zero in on one of these bots before it just annihilates us? Not even delayed annihilation. All right, I kind of want to add some stylistic stuff to the front here. There we go. Now we have a bunch of just random reinforcements on the outside that probably won't really do much, but it looks cooler, I think. I hope. Does it look cooler? Tell me it looks cooler. It'll be painted. It'll look even cooler once it's painted. I gotta figure, how am I supposed to get into this thing? I don't even know about that yet. Okay, now uh, a second floor, maybe? Am I just, go am I going too big on this? Am I just gonna be shooting myself in the foot here with complexity? I don't know. Okay, check it out. So now we should be able to navigate from down here up to, I don't, I don't know where we're going. This is gonna get so blown up up here. Oh, you know what? I should actually extend this out. I'll extend it out by like two blocks like this. And that way it'll give, I'll have a door up on the top too. And it'll give me a little bit of a walkway on the edge as well. I don't know why this is good or not good. What? Hey, 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 stop. Stop, 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 please, please, please stop. It's not stopping. I don't think it's gonna stop. It's just, it's gonna keep going. All right, so I got a second floor built. I got this cool little archway so I can kind of walk between these stairs without bumping into this, but then also when I'm up here, I can easily just go between each section, even though I know I could jump, but you know, it beats accidentally falling anyway, which I'll still probably do over here. I don't know. I thought it looked cool. I thought it was kind of convenient, but I need to figure out where am I going to put my driver's seat? I feel, I guess I could just put a slap a seat anywhere and just drive from there. But I also made myself little uh, gunner holes so I can be up here and just use my own gun if once my turrets get destroyed. I feel like maybe the captain's seat then should be like sticking out a little bit. Wow, this armored glass actually is really terrible for visibility, isn't it? All right, so now how about putting a roof on this thing? I think I'm gonna have to extend the roof up a little bit so I can actually walk on this area. All right, there we go. I gave this thing a roof. I don't know why I went for wood. I don't know why I'm doing a lot of things I'm doing. I just thought the contrast would be kind of nice. And this thing is going to be a terrible inconvenience to navigate. Okay, so now to make this thing drivable, which obviously we're gonna have to use thrusters. All right, ready and go. This isn't quite how I imagined it going. So I'm just gonna slap a thruster there, slap a thruster there, put them on max. So we'll go a little bit faster because I thought that was kind of slow and this should equal out the center of thrust. All right, go. There we go. That, that's doable right there. That is definitely manageable. All right, and then these will be the backwards ones and sideways and turning, hmm. All right, so I should have forwards, backwards, left and right currently hooked up. So forwards, backwards, turning left, and then turning right. That works good. Now I need to hook up strafing. All right, I think this is it. You see, I just hooked those wires up over there, hook those wires up over there, hook these wires up over there. And then once we do a little bit of that, then now when I press this button, nothing happens. And when I press this button, nothing happens. You know why? Because these all have to be OR gates. All right, so now, we strafe left, we strafe right, we turn left, we turn right using the same thrusters. And then forward and back is just completely separate thrusters. So then when I get out of the seat, uh, I can go ahead and continue on trying to destroy whatever's destroying me. I'm, this is not gonna, I, I think this thing is not gonna last very long in a battle against explosive tape bots. So let's go ahead and uh, paint this thing up and 
I think it's ready. I think it's ready to get absolutely destroyed. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I have finished it. And uh, as you can see, I've also added a railing to it just because I kind of figured it'd be easier to walk out here if I didn't have to worry about falling off and stuff. But I painted it mostly gray because to me, that's like the armor color. And I feel like it's a fortress. If that fortress had very many weak spots and was not likely to be effective at being fortified. All right, I'm ready to start bringing in some enemies and I figured we'll ramp it up to the explosive guys. Let's start with like just an army of these tape bots here. I think this would be kind of fun. All right, let's actually strafe myself out here. All right, and then start turning. All right, here we go, check this out. We have our floating fortress. Oh, they are so small already. They're gonna be so difficult to aim at. Oh man, this is gonna be really tough. All right, here we go. So I think we're pretty well situated right here. Let's uh, get in a turret and let's just do a non aggro test on how easy or hard it is going to be to aim at these guys. All right, gotta make sure strict follow camera is on. Let's get our aim situated. All right, right about there. Look at how small they are. All right, I need to, I'm gonna have to change my display to be more zoomed in, 55 degrees. Man, look at that. They're so tiny on the horizon. All right, ready for a shot. Oh my goodness, look at that. There's no way I'm gonna be able to zero in on somebody. Hey, I just killed some. What are they shooting at? Are they shooting at their dead brother? All right, well, this is gonna be fun. Aggro all. Here they come. Here they come. I just wanna see them shoot first. Are they not gonna shoot if they're not close enough? Oh, here we go. Here we go. Okay. All right. I, I think I messed up my aim. All right. I think... Oh, they broke my gun. They broke the actual... The actual... Uh, get, get, uh, get, uh, cannon. The spud gun. Okay, here we go. Don't do it. Don't do it. Wait, what? I can't fire. What did they break that... I couldn't... They broke the button. <gasps> okay. All right. All right. All right. Now we got to turn around. We got to turn... Or use my buttons and actually turn. How are we doing here? Oh, they're breaking through. They are breaking through <laughs> to the cockpit. <laughs> all right, all right, here we go. This is so bad, guys. This is so difficult. All right, all right, get in. All right, zoom in. <gasps> You've gotta be kidding me. This is impossible. All right, come on. This is literally impossible. I, I, all right, now we have to we have to take it to the spud gun now. We gotta take it to the spud gun. We're gonna go up to the second le level. We're gonna go through the window, and this is where things gonna get a lot easier. There we go. This is like, this is impossible to use turrets against these guys. Man, it's so much easier when you have an actual spud gun though. Whoa, who's? Hello? Wait, well, I can't, I can't shoot him. What is this? There we go. Oh, we got a couple more over there. Too bad I don't have any actual turrets to shoot them with. Okay, that's not a good, that that does not bode well for the future against the explosive tape bots. I feel like as soon as I aggro all on the explosive tape bots, I'm gonna hop in a seat and die. But it's gonna be amazing. All right, well, let's take a look at the damage to this thing. Um, as far as the outside goes, I think the metal does pretty well against the standard tape bots. You can see that the less durable railing got hit a handful of times around there. Uh, my armored glass definitely didn't stand up to them very well. And then my turrets just got absolutely annihilated. I feel like building them out of that pipe piece was a mistake. But at the same time, I don't have a lot of space to work with and the pipe pieces are pretty ideal for that kind of situation. You can also see that my bubble blocks did take a little bit of damage as well, uh, only on that one side, interestingly enough. So uh, that was some interesting results. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna try a singular one explosive tape bot. That, that's what we're gonna start with, just the one. Okay, so I'm gonna give myself the rule that they have to fire first, because otherwise, in the time that it takes him to run to me, I could just shoot him and be done with it before he even has an opportunity to attack, and that's just gonna be boring. <coughs> and activate. Oh boy. All right, all right, here it goes. He fired the first shot and I'm already dead. I'm stuck in the seat. Okay, let's just get over here. All right, aim, aim. Oh, this is not going well, people. This is not going well. This is not going well at all. Oh, no. This, oh, I don't have my driver's seat anymore. <laughs> I can't move. 
I'm stuck. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Where's my gun? Where's my gun? Let's get up here. Let's get into a window. I don't even have a floor anymore. I don't have a driver's seat. I don't have nothing. I can't even look through this window. All right, and... Uh, that was... That was absolutely pathetic. Look, all right, let's look at the damage. Let's, uh... Let's assess... Assess the damage here. <laughs> One tape bot did this. One red tape bot. I don't know what I was thinking. Turrets are just so inefficient. They are absolutely terrible. Uh, let's do five tape bots. Come at me, bros. Come at- ah! <laughs> Seeing all those explosives at the same time. All right, here we go. Now I got you. All right, all right, we just gotta turn around is all. Here, let's just go up into the captain's seat. If I, I fell through the bottom of my, <laughs> my fortress. <laughs> is my captain sinking? We're actually sinking. They've sunk us. Oh no. <laughs> what have they done to my fortress? <laughs> oh no, it's so destroyed. They're still shooting at me too. Come on, guy. Leave me alone. Leave me. All right. You know what? I'm going to do it. Kill all. Okay. So I think it's only fair to bump it up to 10 tape bots. And uh, we should do a little bit better this time. Come on. I don't think I... I don't even think I killed one. I don't think I... I am so... I'm already sinking. I don't know what's happening. I'm just... Uh, <laughs> they instantly sink me. They take out so much of the bubble block once they shoot through the initial wall. They're not even shooting at me anymore. Oh, now they are. Yeah, this is, uh, this is a little sad. This is, this is actually, this is really sad. Wait, where'd they all, did they shoot each other? Are there only two left? I think they destroyed each other. Hey guys, come at me. Come at, oh, okay, they came at me. I'm surprised this thing is still floating, to be honest. When it comes to using mounted spud guns, and any material below a durability of eight, uh, I'm gonna say good luck against a red tape bot because you're gonna need it. I had what was, in my opinion, a pretty intimidating looking fortress, but as we obviously seen, it didn't stand a chance even against a single tape bot. It just takes way too long to target track to acquire your target on a uh, mounted turret. So if you guys have any other ideas that you'd like to see in Scrap Mechanic, let me know down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this, you'll probably enjoy some more content on the channel that you can check out right here on the end screen. Check out the merch store as well if you're interested in supporting the channel. Hope this video has earned your subscription. Anyway, this has been Scrap Man, and I'll see you next time. Bye!